Hi everyone and welcome to episode 11 of the Elo and Stitch podcast. I am your host Kristen and I am here to talk to you about knitting. What else? Uh, I will also be talking about knitting pattern design and other goings on in the fiber arts world and there's always a good chance that uh, at some point I'm going to mention Diego Luna. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. Uh, a special thank you to my Patreon patrons who helped me keep the podcast up and running. And a special welcome for any new viewers who are checking out the podcast for the first time. Uh, so if you don't already know me, my name is Kristen Janik. I'm a knitting pattern designer. Uh, I am also the mom to two very mischievous little boys and the wife of a very tall man from Peru. Uh, we live in the Maryland suburbs of Washington, D.C. And I enjoy yoga baseball, gardening, wine, but mostly knitting. So let's start talking about it. So how have you guys been doing? Um, it's almost Thanksgiving. I find this very, very hard to believe. Um, I feel like it was just Halloween and before that it was just Labor Day and now here we are. Uh, it's almost Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving's really late this year, so we're even further along in the calendar than, than seems possible. Um, my in-laws are here, some of them, more of them are coming. Uh, my mother-in-law arrived yesterday with one of my nephews. Um, he is nine years old, he's almost 10, he'll be 10 next month. Uh, so they're staying with us until Saturday, I believe. <laughs> um, my brother's, no, my husband's sister and her husband and their two kids are also in town. They're not staying with us. Um, that would be a little overwhelming. <laughs> um, they are staying in a hotel nearby uh, and they will be joining us for Thanksgiving. And then my husband's younger brother and his girlfriend will also be joining us for Thanksgiving, in addition to my dad and sister. Uh, so we have a very full house right now. Um, this is my kids' first time meeting uh, these three cousins of theirs. My husband's sister and her husband live in Utah. Uh, and then my husband's older brother um, and his wife live in uh, Santiago, Chile, even though they are Peruvian. <laughs> um, so they they haven't traveled here, his, his older brother and, and sister-in-law haven't traveled here since JJ was a baby. Um, but my mother-in-law has brought one of their cousins, Tomas, to visit, I think two years ago. Uh, and now uh, their middle child, Diego, is visiting. And I guess in a couple of years, maybe she'll be able to bring uh, their, their daughter uh, who has not been here. Uh, so this is very exciting for my kids. Um, they don't have any cousins on, or they don't have any first cousins on my side of the family because my sister uh, doesn't have any kids. They do have some uh, second cousins or first cousins, once removed, whatever it is, um, that are adults or young adults. So that's not very exciting for them. Uh, so this is their first chance to, to have cousins that are actually not their age, but kids. Um, so my kids are five and six slash almost seven. Um, and as I said, Diego is nine. And then my sister-in-law's two kids are four and two. So they were all playing together yesterday in the playroom peacefully with no problems. Um, I think by the end of the week, I'll be feeling a little, <laughs> a little overwhelmed. Um, but right now it's, it's nice to have so many people around and especially having the kids around. Uh, the only tricky thing is, um, 
that uh, Diego speaks pretty limited English. Um, the two-year-old you know, really doesn't doesn't talk a lot yet, and the four-year-old um, she is speaking both English and Spanish, but seems to be speaking Spanish more and. My kids are just really stubborn and do not want to learn Spanish. Um, when we had kids, our original plan was to speak both languages at home so they would pick up on both languages. Um, but uh, first JJ had a speech delay, so we had decided to just focus on, on English, trying to get him to speak one language. And then Ollie ultimately, you know, um, had, I, I mean, I guess we would it's not really a speech delay. He can't, he has what's called apraxia of speech. So he um, can't really talk and, and expecting him to, <laughs> to grapple with another language is um, not really fair. So they are having a little bit of difficulty communicating with their cousins. I mean, obviously Ollie would have difficulty communicating with them anyway, um, but definitely it's something we have to work on um, maybe not so much with Ollie, but, you know, getting both kids to at least understand Spanish, uh, beyond a few, a few limited words. So for now, we're doing well with all of this, this family in town for the holiday, which is somehow just a few days away. Uh, I am hosting Thanksgiving. Um, so we usually have Thanksgiving at my house. My sister and I, um, well, my sister make, does the turkey and then we kind of split the rest of the dishes. Um, so I always do the desserts and I have lots of pies to bake and I need to get started on preparations. Um, so that's generally what's been going on around here. But then I did have one other thing to show off, which is that last weekend, um, you know, I knew that all of these in-laws would be arriving this weekend. So I told my husband I was in a Go out with my sister, you know, girls' night out, get out of the house um, before all the madness started. Uh, so I went up to Frederick where she lives, and um, before our girls' night out, I decided, well, I decided earlier, that makes it sound very spontaneous, I had already decided um, that I wanted to get a new tattoo. Uh, and I'm going to show it to you guys just because it is a knitting themed tattoo. Let's see if we can, I guess it's going to be hard to see because it's going to be backwards. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit tricky to read here on the camera and the way I'm angling my arm. So it says uh, whip and of course has a little ball of yarn at the end. Um, so I'm very excited to have um, a knitting tattoo. Of course, lots of people who don't knit have already been asking me what on earth it means. Um, but I think, you know, pretty much everybody can understand the concept of a work in progress, uh, even if they are not familiar with the WIP acronym. So um, I'm very happy with it. Um, I have one, two, three, four, five. This is my fifth tattoo. Um, most of them I can't really see. Um, so I have this one here. I have one on the back of my shoulder, one on the back of my hip, and then one on my leg, um, which is usually covered up by my jeans. So. Um, I really can't see any of my tattoos readily, but this one, you know, maybe not today because I'm wearing long sleeves, but you know, I can look at it anytime I want. Uh, so I am very happy with it. Um, my husband doesn't like it, but he doesn't like tattoos, uh, which is fine. It's his prerogative. But when I said I was going to get another tattoo, he made a face. He's like, I don't like tattoos. Well, don't get one. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> I do like them and you know, it's my body. So um, I'm very happy with it. And I shared a foot on Instagram and it has been uh, very popular. So I guess that's all I have to chatter incoherently about this, this uh, episode. Let's get into some actual knitting content. Uh, all right, so the first thing that I wanna do is on the needles, off the needles, because I'm actually wearing something that I got off the needles. So I'll just um, take a step. Here we go. <laughs> so you guys can see. Um, this is a test knit that I did for Karina Spencer, and it is called the Lace Hem Tee. Um, 
getting my hair out of the way. So, all right, oh, you can see another tattoo. Uh, so it has sort of just a, a wide kind of boat neck in the back, uh, a V in the front. You can actually wear it um, with either one in the front. Um, then you can see that it has sort of a cropped body. So it's designed to be um, a nice layering piece. Um, so today I'm just wearing it over a tank top. This isn't actually ideal because this is uh, velvet and it's kind of sticking to the wall. Um, so, but it's really kind of cute for putting over your spring and summer tops. Um, and it is a, let's see here, a drop shoulder uh, with just sort of simple lace around the hem, um, contrast colors. So I used, the main yarn is Manos del Uruguay Fino, which is a single ply fingering weight yarn. Um, and this colorway is called, I want to say antique lace, but I will double check and put it in the show notes. Uh, I really liked this one, it's like a warm off white. And when you get closer, you can see it's got like little bits of gray, grays and browns in it. Uh, and then my contrast color is a leftover from the Calderoso Slipper Socks pattern that I released this summer. So this is Woolberry Fiber Company Berry Sock. I believe the colorway is Caramel Latte, but again, I'll double check so you can see it's browns and reds. Uh, and the pattern includes three different sleeve options. So I picked, obviously, the one with thumb holes, which I love. Um, when I was a teenager, uh, I was always pulling my hands into my sleeves, and then at some point I just started cutting holes like in my sweatshirt so I could wear them this way, because uh, I always had uh, very cold hands. So I love these thumb holes, and they're worked just like a buttonhole. Um, then if I don't want them on, I can just wear the sleeve normally, and you really can't, you know, it's fine. Um, and so it's, yeah, it's worked just like a buttonhole, so you basically bind off and cast on the stitches for the thumb hole, and that's it. Um, but the, it does have other options, so a regular um, long sleeve and also a cap sleeve. Um, so as I said, this is a, this was a test knit for Karina Spencer. Uh, I actually finished it earlier this month. I think the deadline was the 11th, I think it was a Monday, and I just barely scraped by. Um, so I did have it finished, but I wasn't happy with one of the thumb holes. I think it was this one actually. <laughs> um, but uh, one of the edges had been at the corners, it was kind of loose, and one of them was really loose. Uh, and then when I tried to tighten it up, I just made a big mess of it. So I kind of let it sit for a while. Um, tried to convince myself I was, you know, no one was going to notice. It was going to be fine, but I really wasn't happy with it. So I, you know, I decided to rip back the sleeve and fix it. And I mean, obviously this is only, you know, a few inches of, that I had to rip out, but thinking a project is done and then I'm having to go back and work on it again is frustrating. So it took me um, a good week to convince myself to actually do it. Um, so, but I'm so happy I did because now I'm very happy with the thumb holes and I love, I love this sweater. So now I actually, this is um, the first time I've test knit for anybody and I decided to do it because one, I really, I loved the pattern. Um, seeing her photos on Instagram just looked more gorgeous. Uh, but also I thought, since I do run tests for my own designs, it would be a good idea to see that process kind of from the other side, the other perspective. Um, so it has given me some good ideas for changes I might be making to my test knitting uh, coming up in 2020, we'll see. Um, but, you know, it was a very smooth process. Her pattern was just about perfect already, even before she had testers. Um, beautiful layout. I was very jealous of that part. Um, so I think she's going to be releasing this. If she hasn't released it by the time uh, this episode goes live, I think it's going to be sometime this coming week. Um, so you should be able to get um, 
your copy of the pattern very soon. I definitely highly recommend it. Um, I forgot to say I'm wearing the size, it has 10 sizes, which is a lot. Uh, so it is designed to have uh, quite a bit of positive ease and I am wearing the size small, which has a 43 inch finished bust. And so I'm wearing it with eight-ish inches of positive ease. Um, so definitely a great pattern, I highly recommend. And that is the first thing I have off the meals. I actually have a second thing. Hang on. All right, so I finally finished my weekender. It is done. Um, this has been finished for most of the month at least. I think I might have even finished at the end of October, just after the last uh, uh, episode. So the weekender pattern, if you're not familiar, is from uh, Andrea Mallory. It is a bottom-up drop shoulder. Um, it has a little bit of a split hem and a little bit of high-low hem. So I think the front hem is like, I don't know, an inch and a quarter and the back hem is you know, two and a half inches or something like that. Uh, this is another pattern where um, you are supposed to wear with lots of ease. This is the size small, but off the top of my head, I can't remember what that measurement is. I will definitely include it in the show notes. Um, and you can see this is just a very simple boat neck. Oh, let's try it this way. How about that? <laughs> very simple boat neck uh, on this with, you know, sort of one by one rib. And then it is, the body is um, garter stitch. I mean, sorry, reverse stockinette stitch with um, a column of slip stitches down the front. So actually you work this inside out up to the armhole so that you're knitting every round. Uh, and then at the armholes, you switch it so that you're working um, flat with the right side, I believe. Um, and then, you know, three needle bind off at the shoulders and a tubular bind off around the neckline and around the sleeve cuffs. So I'm loving this one as well. I have been um, living in it most of the time. I used, it's a, the yarn is discontinued. It is Neighborhood Fiber Company Cobblestone DK, I want to say, uh, which is a Blue Face Lester Silk Blend, I think. Um, so the yarn is discontinued and the colorway was a colorway from uh, Sweater Club a few years ago. So that was an exclusive colorway. They don't have that either. So basically you cannot recreate this sweater, but you can get the pattern if you like. Um, it's really comfortable um, and it's really simple. The only tricky part is, you know, there are maybe some short rows in here to, to slope the, the shoulders and that's it. The rest of it is just basically knitting in the round. Um, tubular bind off is actually really easy and um, if you need a tutorial there's one on my YouTube channel so all right so I actually finished two things for this month I'm very excited um, it's been a long time since I have knit a sweater that's just for me I obviously I knit some sweaters for my designing and I wear them but the process to create them is much more complicated. Um, so to just sit down with somebody else's pattern and follow it um, without you know, worrying about you know, numbers and making sure the instructions are right and, and making changes as I go along. And it's very, it's a very different experience. So of course I love designing, but just the opportunity to sit down with the pattern and just use it um, was delightful. Uh, um, and now I have two you know, new sweaters to be wearing, which I will definitely be doing. As I said, I have been wearing the Weekender um, several times a week. It's been, we've had a cold November here. Uh, this one I just finished, so I have not been wearing it too much yet, but I definitely absolutely will be. I think this one would be really cute with uh, the jumpsuits I've been wearing in the summer, but 
then in order to pee, <laughs> you know, it's already a pain to remove oneself from a jumpsuit to use the bathroom. And then if you've got a sweater on top, kind of making things even more complicated, but we'll see. I think this would be really cute, uh, actually with both of the jumpsuits that I have from the summer. So maybe if I decide to try that out, I'll, I'll be sure to share photos on Instagram. Um, so those are two things I have off the needles. For on the needles, um, I haven't started anything new, uh, really. I started this a while ago. This is the, <laughs> this ball of nothing, is the Not Front Crop by um, Carrie Bloomer, um, Carrie Knits. Um, I obviously have not really made very much progress. Um, but um, I had kind of put, I had started this and then I put it on hold to do the test knit. And now that that's done, um, and December is going to be a little slower in terms of my designing, just because I try to get a little bit of a break during the holidays. Um, hopefully I'll be making some progress on this. Um, a while back I had swatched for a Clio sweater uh, and then hadn't done much since with it. But now I'm sort of uh, high on the joys of having two new sweaters, um, so I may try to get moving on that. And then the other thing, um, I still haven't started, but I'm planning to very soon is the framework bralette um, from Jessie Mae Martinson. I have to like take some measurements in order to, she's got a, a very comprehensive uh, guide to, to selecting your size. Um, so I need to take some me measurements to do that, but I already have the yarn wound. Um, and Hopefully I will be starting and finishing that soon because it's a quick project. So that is what I have for on and off the needles this month. All right, for this month's Adelante, which is where I show you sneak peeks of upcoming patterns, I'm gonna show you a peek at my very last pattern for 2019. Uh, so earlier this year, I released the Diego cardigan. This has been uh, my most successful sweater pattern, and it is an all over cable cardigan that I absolutely love. Um, and I couldn't just leave the cables alone. <laughs> so I am working on a companion pattern, which is a hat. It has a lot of the same uh, all over cable pattern that Diego has. And like Diego, it has this sort of twisty switch it up bit in just one spot. Um, the original Diego cardigan was knit in Julie Aslan. I, I really should find out. I met Julie at India Untangled and I really, you know, that would have been a great time to ask, but I didn't. Um, I will include a link in the show notes, of course, so you can find it despite my terrible pronunciation. Uh, this is her nurtured yarn, which is a um, heathered worsted weight um, wool blend. I don't remember off the top of my head exactly what breeds are in it. Uh, I know there's some Cormo. I'm going to check the other ones. And again, I'll include that link in my show notes. Um, and so the hat is also being done in her nurtured yarn. This is her... Um, Indian Tangled exclusive colorway. I picked up two skeins of this at Indian Tangled. I thought I was only going to use one skein for the hat, but with so many cables, I am actually going to have to bust into the second skein. Thank goodness I have it. Um, and this colorway is called Leaf Pile, and you can see um, it's kind of like a purple pinky brown. The lighting's not great to really show you the colors, but it's heathered. It's got some grays, some some reds in there. Um, doesn't really remind me very much of a leaf pile, but it certainly is a very pretty color. So I am using that exclusive colorway for the hat, but of course she has plenty of other uh, regular colorways um, that you'll be able to use for your hat. Um, I made it up a second sample of this hat. It depends. I had bought a skein of Magpie Fibers Nest, which is her new worsted weight. 
actually in kind of a similar colorway that I was thinking about using for a second sample, but now that I've realized uh, how much yarn is going on into just the one hat, I'm not sure if I will have enough of that. So we will see. Um, the hat pattern is going to include three sizes. So this is uh, the middle size, which is like a 22 inch circumference. So it also have 20 inch and 24 inch. Um, I'm gonna make this maybe a little bit slouchy and I'm thinking a faux fur pom-pom on the end. I definitely don't, I like the idea of a pom-pom, but I don't think a yarn pom-pom would go as well with all of the cable and texture as that sort of faux fur style pom-pom, um, maybe in like a white or an off-white. So I am currently working on this pattern to be released. Um, in mid-December, a little bit closer to Christmas, if you celebrate Christmas. Um, and I'm gonna tell you guys, and you're the only ones that know, that this pattern uh, is going to be free for my newsletter subscribers for 24 hours only. So if you are not subscribed to my newsletter, um, you can find uh, the form to sign up at mediapetawana.com slash newsletter. <laughs> uh, and you should definitely get on my subscribers list you're interested in getting that pattern for free. Uh, I also have a contest going on right now over in my Ravelry group to help me name this pattern. Um, so I will include a link in the show notes. You can just pop over to my Ravelry group and um, add your name suggestion to the thread. And if I pick your name suggestion, then you will win a free ebook from my Ravelry shop. There are three different ebooks in there. So one's for adults, one's for kids, and one is for both. <laughs> Um, and you'll be able to pick any one of those three if I pick your name for the pattern. Uh, so that is what I have for Adelante this month. New hat pattern coming up. And if you're a newsletter subscriber, you'll have a chance to get it absolutely free. No strings attached. So definitely head over there and sign up if you're interested. All right. So this month for events, I am excited to tell you about the Indie Design Gift Along. This is the seventh year for this event. Uh, and it's basically a big craft along during the holiday season. Um, there are nearly 300 designers participating this year. Uh, and basically to join in the fun, you pick a indie pattern from a participating designer or more than one. Uh, and craft your project and enter it in the um, appropriate um, cow thread, cow being K-A-L or C-A-L, it includes knit and crochet, uh, and you are eligible for prizes. Um, the event starts as always with a great big sale, which uh, I know is the exciting part for many people, but it is not the only part. Um, but with regard to the sale, the first week uh, of the gift along, each designer who is participating, and as I said, there are almost 300, has picked 10, somewhere between 10 and 20 of their indie patterns uh, that will be 25% off. There is a list of participating designers uh, and you can find that in the Indie Design Gift Along group on Ravelry. And then each participating designer has created a bundle of their sale patterns. So you can go onto their designer page to look for that. Um, and so Tuesday night starts November 26th at 8 p.m. Tuesday night, the Gift Along sale starts. And to get your 25% off, you pick a pattern from one of the designer's sale bundle and add it to your cart. And at checkout, you put in the code GIFTALONG2019 and you get your 25% off. Uh, you can absolutely use the code more than once. You can buy multiple patterns from one designer. You can buy one pattern from 10 different designers. It's entirely up to you. Uh, but for the first week, all of those patterns from the indie designers that they have, each of them has selected, will be 25% off with that code. So every designer is using the same coupon code, GIFTALONG2019, 
and the discount is the same for everybody, 25% off. Um, so I know a lot of people look forward to the sale part and it is exciting. I definitely use it to stack up on some patterns, support my fellow designers. Uh, but the entire event is six, five weeks. Um, sometimes it's, it's funny, sometimes it's longer than others because it usually starts right before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is late this year, so it's a, a little bit of a shorter event. Um, but it is five weeks long, and so the sale is just the first week. Um, but after that, or even, you know, it starts as soon as the sale starts because you don't have to use a pattern that you purchased during the sale if you've already, you know, have a pattern from one of the participating designers in your library, uh, you are welcome to use that. Um, and then there will be five weeks of everybody crafting along with their um, indie patterns that either they already had or that they purchased during the first week. In the Indie Design Gift Along group, there are gonna be threads for, I think it's broken up like, you know, hats, knit crocheted hats, and then their shawls and their socks. I think it's broken up like that. There are eight categories. Um, and then there's what is called the Oopadoo, which is if you um, want to challenge yourself to finish one project in each of the eight knit along, crochet along categories. I believe there are special prizes for that. And there's definitely at least a special badge for that. Um, so it doesn't just end with the sale. You have weeks of crafting together with your fellow knitters and with the uh, indie designers that are participating. I know I try to use this this time of year uh, as an opportunity to do some selfish knitting and gift knitting and work from other designers' patterns um, with varying degrees of success. I always at least start, but I don't always finish. Um, but yeah, I, I know I do and I know other designers do as well. Try to use this time uh, as a little bit of a break from designing and a chance to just you know do some relaxed, non-design knitting, support their fellow designers. Um, and uh, one thing I want to highlight is that while each designer has picked 20, 10 to 20 patterns to include in the sale during the first week, those are not the only eligible patterns. Any of their patterns are eligible for the, um, for the knit and crochet longs, any of their non-free patterns, as I recall, I will double check, uh, are eligible for the knit alongs and crochet alongs and for you to win prizes. There are lots of prizes. Um, there are, let's see, each designer, and I said there are almost 300, and each designer has donated um, prize codes for free patterns. Uh, so there are probably nearly 2,000 free patterns to be won. Uh, and if you win a free pattern, then that is good for um, any of the indie designs in their shop and the codes, the prize codes are good up until Feb the end of February. So maybe there's nothing in their shop you want right now, but you wait and you see something in the next couple of months and you can get it then. Uh, and then there are also like actual physical prizes to be won as well. Um, so I hope you will join us for this fun event. It is a good time to be had by all every year. It's a great chance to support indie design. Uh, it's also a chance to maybe challenge yourself if you're interested in that uh, oopadoo. And it's also a chance to sort of get some moral support and encouragement if you are working on gift knitting in the run up to the holidays. Uh, the event does run through December 31st at midnight. Um, so, Maybe at first you're working on those holiday gifts, but then you finish them up and you can focus on some selfish knitting. Um, you know, whatever it is you like to do, but I really hope you will join us for this event. It's so much fun and definitely something I look forward to every year. So I will include a link in the show notes um, to all of that good stuff, the Indie Design Gift Along group, as well as my Gift Along sale bundle. Um, and 
Remember that everything kicks off at 8 p.m. on Tuesday, November 26th. All right, I have a pattern drop for you this month. Um, I released this pattern much earlier in the month, so you may have already seen it. Um, but just in case, this is going to be a tour of the cellophane flowers cardigan. All right, so this is the cellophane flowers cardigan. This is knit in Hedgehog Fibers Merino Aran. So this is an Aran weight cardigan. It has pockets, um, these bold columns of cables, fisherman's rib up the front into a big cozy shawl collar. And then this very dramatic cable all down the back. Um, this is a drop shoulder. See the drop shoulder seam there. Um, and it is knit from the bottom up. So you're gonna, it has a big split hem. So you're gonna start working in pieces, join the pieces here, then you're gonna keep um, working until here. Then you pick up the pockets from here, work those up, join everything in one big piece, uh, and then knit all the way up to the armholes when you're gonna split again into various pieces, right? So your cable column, one runs all the way up the front until it runs into the collar. The other one runs up the side and then all the way up to the shoulder and then just the one on the back. Now the, let's see if I can spin this around a little bit. The front bands, as you can see, are knit together with it, the sweater body. So you are not picking these bands up afterward. You're knitting it all the way up. When you get up here, you can see you're gonna start these increases increase 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 to the center back i've got this a little bit crooked here let me see if i can straighten it out with one hand <laughs> okay <laughs> so you increase until you get to the center here uh, and then you're going to work some short rows because you the, the, the circumference length like it's not circumference because it's not really a circle but the inner edge doesn't need to be as long as the outer edge. The outer edge needs to be longer to fold down. So you're gonna work some short rows here and then um, you can seam them together however you like. You could do kitchener skit, stitch. You can do three needle bind off, uh, which is what I have done. Um, so I did it so that the three needle bind off, the line was on the opposite side, but you could put it on this side. Um, so whatever works best for you. And that is this month's pattern drop, cellophane flowers cardigan with pockets. All right, so cellophane flowers, the pattern includes eight sizes. It's designed to be worn with four to six inches of positive ease. Uh, I actually made this one a little small. Um, the way that the I've written the sizes is I've given you the finished measurement but then you're also going to keep in mind that it has about, when it's pulled fully closed, about a two inch gap in the front as well. So this is the size 38. Um, and that doesn't, that's just the finished measurements. So you add two inches to that. So it's actually about 40 inches all the way around. Um, so I'm only modeling it with a little bit less than, than four inches of positive ease. So. Um, you definitely want yours to be a little bit bigger, um, but that's just that was just my preference for how I wanted to knit it for me. Um, of course, you could, you know, any size you want, whatever your preferred ease is, but I, my intention was for it to fit, um, you know, have a very casual, comfortable fit. Uh, it is nice and warm in the Merino Aran. It also knits up pretty quickly, um, even though there's kind of a lot going on. You know, the trickiest part is the the start because you've got you know you're knitting in pieces for a bit and then you're joining together and then you're going to do the pockets um, but once you've got all that done it takes about eight to ten inches of knitting the rest of the body um, 
It's pretty simple. Uh, if you have not worked in Fisherman's Room before, it's actually very easy. Um, and there is a tutorial on my YouTube page. <laughs> um, so you could check that out if interested. Um, the pattern includes sizes from extra small to 4X. I don't remember right off the top of my head what the exact uh, finished measurements are, but I will definitely double check my pattern and put that in the show notes. I want to say the largest size is about 64 inches, 63 inches, but I, I will double check uh, and put that in the show notes. Um, and of course, you can find the cellophane flowers pattern uh, over on Ravelry in my shop. All right, this month in news and notes, I wanted to tell you guys about a new series of vlogs I'm gonna be sharing in the near future. Um, so I will admit right up front that I am sort of copying this idea. What is that? What did the Knit More Girl say? Purloined. <laughs> um, purloined this idea from my indie dyer crush, uh, Fiber for the People, Taylor Earl. Um, so, you know, she does these behind the scenes vlogs about her dyeing process. Uh, and I thought maybe it would be interesting to do um, some behind the scenes vlogs for the design process. So I am currently working on a um, cardigan design that I'm going to be hopefully releasing at the end of January, my first pattern for 2020. And so I am recording for you guys a series of vlogs that are going to sort of go behind the scenes of that. Um, so you can see what goes in to the process of designing a sweater. Um, these are going to be vlogs, so that's going to be different um, from the podcast itself in that they're going to be shorter, probably 10 to 15 minutes each, and they're going to be a lot less formal. There's no structure, you know, <laughs> to them. Um, it's just a lot of it is kind of me thinking out loud or um, sort of going through some options with you, talking about how I may or may not do things, and then you'll see how I ultimately decide to do them. Um, so I just sort of started recording these. I have not made much progress in this sweater design other than swatching so far. Um, and of course, a lot of the early part of sweater design is just thinking, which isn't particularly interesting to watch, although, as I said, there are a few short clips of me kind of thinking through things out loud. Um, I haven't decided yet when I want to start releasing these. I don't know if maybe, you know, two weeks before the, the pattern comes out, I'm going to start releasing them, or maybe I'm going to do it a little bit earlier. Um, so a lot of the process in this idea is I'm still kind of working through it, but uh, it is something I am working on. Um, I hope you're going to find it interesting. Uh, I am certain that the production quality is not going to match the dying vlogs of Fiber for the People, uh, as nice as that would be. Um, I'm still over here using my iPhone camera for the podcast, so, you know, it's not going to be that fancy. Um, but hopefully it's going to give you sort of a peek behind the scenes and show a little more clearly all of the work um, that goes into the design process. So like I said, I'm not certain exactly how I'm going to start releasing those, but they will appear uh, here on my YouTube channel. They will only be on the YouTube channel. So if you're watching this on um, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or you know any of those other podcatchers, um, you'll have to go to my YouTube channel to check that out. Uh, but it will be coming up in the relatively near future, so you can keep an eye out for it. Uh, and of course, if you are a newsletter subscriber, you will be the first to know about that. Or if you are subscribed to my YouTube channel and you have set up the notifications to let you know when there's new content, you can find out about it that way. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for behind the scenes vlogs for the knitting pattern design process coming soon to a YouTube channel near you. <laughs> All right, that's all I have for you in this month's episode. Thank you so much for joining me for episode 11 of the ELO and Stitch podcast. Uh, you can find show notes with links to everything that I have talked about and uh, clarifications of anything that I wasn't quite clear on 
uh, at mediaperuana.com slash elo and stitch. Uh, again, a special thank you to my Patreon patrons for supporting the podcast, helping me keep uh, the podcast going as well as the design business going. Uh, if you are interested in supporting the podcast and or in supporting Media Peruana Designs and getting bonus episodes of the podcast and free patterns and all kinds of perks like that, you can find more information about that at patreon.com slash Media Peruana. Uh, if you are watching this podcast on YouTube, thank you so much. Please subscribe, like, comment, uh, all of those things that help people to find the podcast. I greatly appreciate it. Helps expand the podcast reach. Um, you can also find uh, past episodes of the podcast as well as um, free knitting tutorials on my YouTube channel. You can find past and current episodes of the podcast on Stitcher, Apple Podcast, or your favorite podcatcher. And if you are looking on, for me on social media, you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Media Peruana. And I'll see you guys next time.